Hello and welcome to this telecoms.com webinar produced in association with Asia Info Linkage. I'm Mike Hibbard, Editorial Director at Telecoms.com and today we're looking at an issue of fundamental importance to the operator community which is the case for centralising BSS installations. I'm very pleased to be joined today by Andy Tiller who's the Vice President for Product Marketing at Asia Info and he has some real world experiences to share with you from centralisation projects that Asia Info has worked on with China Unicom and China Mobile. Before I hand over to Andy though, I'd just like to take you through some research that we conducted here at Telecoms.com into this very topic. As part of the Telecoms.com Intelligence 2013 Industry Survey, we looked at operator attitudes to the centralisation and standardisation of BSS and the findings were very interesting. Operators' BSS installations are notoriously fragmented, with new platforms often having been added over the years on an application by application basis. In today's market, much is made of the benefits that can be derived from scale, but for international operators that have been built through acquisition, size is really just the beginning. The benefits of scale are only as great as the operator's ability to leverage it. More often than not, there is huge diversity in the systems installed at the individual opcos, meaning that it's difficult to bring them all into alignment. Meanwhile, cultural and political barriers to progress are just as difficult to negotiate as technical problems, with frequent disagreements between Group HQ and the national outposts. Centralisation or standardisation of BSS could be the answer, although respondents to our survey were more open to the notion of standardisation than centralisation as we can see from this slide. Almost 70% said they believed that international operators should look to standardise, while 35% felt that centralisation was also a sound strategy. Either way, greater alignment of BSS is clearly seen as attractive. The reasons for this are perhaps not surprising. Reduced OPEX was perceived to be the greatest upside of a centralised strategy, with a rating average of 3.8 out of 5. Expressed another way, 65.7% of respondents felt it was highly beneficial. Close behind, with 63.1% of respondents voting the same way, was the ability that centralisation of the BSS gives operators to offer consistent services to international enterprise customers. Reduced capex and the ability to offer consistent products across different opcos were also seen as important upsides. The fact that centralisation was seen as less appealing than standardisation may well reflect the fact that it's perceived to be more difficult to achieve. 35.6% of respondents felt that it was achievable, while 38.8% rated it difficult. Standardisation, on the other hand, was seen as achievable by 46.7% and difficult by 26.1%. It is worth noting, though, that less than 3% felt either approach to be impossible. So what are the challenges responsible for the somewhat cautious approach that our survey uncovered? It was interesting that respondents felt that the biggest issue for operators looking to centralise or standardise BSS would be political rather than technical. Respondents to the survey identified internal politics and conflicting business cultures as the stiffest challenge. In fact, more than one-fifth of respondents, 21.6%, rated this as having the highest level of severity. Operational risk, which placed second overall, had nowhere near as high a rating at the top end of the scale, with only 12.5% of respondents giving it the highest level of severity. The third most serious challenge identified by respondents was that posed by regulation. This was judged as having the highest level of severity by more people than operational risk, in fact with 15.8% giving it the maximum rating. It's of particular concern in Europe, where regulation around the storage of customer data prevents that data being housed outside of the customer's home market. The emergence of the cloud as an internal tool for international operators may hold the key to enabling what is clearly a desirable BSS evolution in the face of what are equally serious challenges and objections. When asked if standardisation of the BSS function would be easier to achieve if the operator hosted a central private cloud installation, which was then accessed by the individual national opcos, 16.3% of respondents answered that it would be much easier, and a further 48.3% somewhat easier. And it is this kind of installation that Asia Info's Andy Tiller would like to talk to you about in more depth. Before I hand over, I should let you know that Andy will stay online after his presentation to answer any questions that you've got, and you can put a question to him at any time by typing it into the dialog box on this page. For now though, Andy, it's over to you. Thanks, Mike. I'm Andy Tiller, Vice President of Product Marketing for Asia Info Linkage. In this presentation, I'll be explaining a number of different approaches to centralizing and standardizing BSS operations, 
and highlighting some real-world case studies from China Mobile and China Unicom. First, a quick word about Asia Info Linkage for those of you who don't know us. We're the leading provider of telecom software and services in Asia, headquartered in Beijing. Our solutions include a full suite of business and operation support systems which serve nearly a billion subscribers. In China, we have more than 50% market share in IT for telecoms through our partnerships with China Mobile, China Unicom, and China Telecom. And today, I'm going to be referring to some of the work we've done with these customers. The survey reveals that standardizing business support systems across a group of operating companies is generally viewed as desirable by many operators. However, it's also viewed as difficult to achieve in practice. This reflects the historical reality that standardization has meant restricting the flexibility of local operating companies, or OPCOs, to respond to their own market conditions. It was either Group HQ in control or the local OPCO, which is a difficult compromise. Nevertheless, now it seems that there is a new hope for a solution. 60% of respondents in the survey believed that the task of standardizing the BFS functions would be more easily achieved in a centralized environment, where the group operator hosts a private cloud BSS deployment accessed remotely by the individual opcos. We might want to call this BFS as a service, or BAS. Let's see how this can potentially help. A single instance of the BSS, centrally hosted and maintained, can achieve enormous efficiencies in a number of ways. Firstly, there can be substantial CapEx savings. Blade servers and virtualization significantly reduce the cost of hardware and make the system easily scalable. The idea is that you don't need dedicated servers for databases, file storage, and compute engines. Virtualization allows everything to run on standard, low-cost x86 blades. If you want to scale up, simply plug in more blades. Significant OPEX savings can also be achieved because the operator only needs to implement changes once in a single system rather than multiple times in different systems and different locations. As well as saving cost, this also improves time to market. Equally importantly, each local OPCO can stay in control of its own operation. This BSS as a service approach is enabled by multi-tenancy, whereby a single instance of the BSS can support many different OPCO requirements. Each OPCO can have its own products, tariffs, currencies, languages, taxes, and most crucially, even its own customized business processes. I'll show you later how this works. Note that parts of the system can also be distributed so that certain functions and data can be hosted locally by each OPCO if that's the most appropriate thing to do. So a modern BSS system running in a private cloud potentially offers the best of both worlds. The efficiencies of standardization and centralization combined with the flexibility for local opcos to keep control of their own operations. It's no longer either or. The key technical enabler is multi-tenancy. This is exactly how Asia Info has helped China Mobile and China Unicom to standardize and centralize their own business support systems across parts of their businesses in China. And we'll look at these case studies in a moment. But first, it's worth examining some of the finer nuances to show how flexible a modern BSS deployment can be. What we showed on the previous slide assumed no restrictions on co-location of IT systems from different countries or regions. It also assumed that there is a sound business logic for a degree of consolidation in the different OPCO's offers and business processes. This isn't necessarily always the case for all components of the system. For example, there may be regulatory restrictions preventing personal data from being stored outside the subscriber's home country. Or there might be latency issues with hosting real-time systems centrally if the OPCO's network is a long distance away from where the BSS deployment is located. Equally, there may be reasons why it's difficult to achieve benefits from standardizing BSS. For example, if the OPCO's have very dissimilar cultures or markets, it might not make business sense to consolidate their IT systems. So in practice, there are many options depending upon these two factors, the desirability of business process consolidation on the one hand, and the practicality of co-locating IT systems on the other. The options range from doing nothing, the traditional approach of having separate and different local systems for each OPCO, to completely merging the OPCO's businesses, including their IT systems. 
with many more interesting options in between. The case I showed earlier is the one labeled 1C, a centralized deployment with multi-tenancy. Option 1C looks like this, where several opcos access one software instance in a central location via a private cloud. But other approaches can achieve some of the same benefits. For instance, option 1B co-locates separate BSS stacks for each opco on a shared resource pool of blade servers with virtualization. This can save a lot on hardware costs and also allows the operator to locate a critical mass of skilled IT staff in one central location. Alternatively, if the case for standardizing IT systems is strong but co-location is not an option, a common version of the application software can be run in multiple locations with centralized software distribution, monitoring, and disaster recovery. It loses some of the hardware cost savings but retains many other benefits of centralization, such as the ability to make changes just once in a single system and to maintain consistency of offerings across different opcos. Equally, it's not essential to centralize every component of the BSS stack. For example, it might not make sense to centralize real-time mediation and charging if there are network constraints which introduce unacceptable latency. In this case, the real-time components can be local to each opco. Similarly, if there are regulatory constraints about hosting personal data in the subscriber's own country, the database layer can be distributed in order to comply. So it's not a case of all or nothing. The different deployment models can be mixed and matched as appropriate to suit different operators' business requirements. Now let's see how multi-tenancy provides the flexibility for each opco to have its own business processes. The architecture has multiple layers for presentation, business logic, data objects, and data storage. Within each layer, each opco can either share standard components or have their own. So opco A, for example, has its own user interface for customer service agents to use, its own order processing logic, and its own customer data. And opco B is similar. But all opcos share some standard processes and data objects so much of the system is reusable for the whole group. The order process for OPCO A uses its own business logic and provisioning and breaks out for ID authentication to comply with a local regulatory requirement. OPCO B has its own user interface, order process, and customer data. But both OPCOs share the same business objects and all of the standardized business logic. For example, in this case, the logic for querying the product catalog and updating customer data. Azure Info has had good success with centralized private cloud deployments of our BSS systems, notably with China Mobile and China Unicom. The Chinese operators organize their businesses into 31 separate provincial operations. There's also a headquarters operation with its own BSS, holding corporate customer accounts which span beyond individual provinces. The provinces are typically larger than most countries elsewhere in the world, so the provincial opcos are further divided into regional operations. We've helped both China Mobile and China Unicom to move parts of their BSS into the cloud for access by multiple different provinces, each with its own local requirements. Zhejiang Mobile, a large provincial operator of China Mobile, has centralized and standardized its BSS operations for its regional operators. China Mobile has also built a centralized system at its South China base in Guangdong and has started migrating provincial operators onto it. China Unicom has also used cloud platforms and multi-tenancy to centralize parts of its BSS for all its provinces. For example, its online mobile phone store. And for six large provinces in the north of China, it's gone even further and fully standardized the BSS systems. Let's look at China Mobile first. They use three different deployment models. Many provinces use the headquarters version of the BSS with their own local customizations, a traditional model. Zong, China Mobile's subsidiary in Pakistan, has its own fully customized system. However, China Mobile has built a centralized version of the HQ system, which is hosted in Guangdong on a private cloud platform, the so-called South China base. And China Mobile has begun migrating some provincial opcos to this platform accessed in a BSS as a service model. 
Furthermore, Zhejiang province is so large that it has several regional OCOs, each of which is larger than many European countries, and it has deployed its own private cloud system. The move to cloud-based technology platforms has had many benefits. Here's some analysis of the KPI improvements from Zhejiang Mobile's centralization of its CRM system. Firstly, CapEx savings of 80% on hardware have been achieved by moving to a small machine architecture with virtualization. The centralized system is simpler to operate and much more efficient, leading to reduced transaction times and faster time to market for new services and offers. It turns out that all this has a knock-on effect on customer satisfaction, which has improved by 20% as a result. The more streamlined systems also have been popular with staff, increasing employee satisfaction and reducing training times dramatically from over two hours per day to only half an hour. Based on its early successes, we've estimated that China Mobile could make CapEx and OpEx savings of over $140 million annually by scaling up the BSS centralization to 25 provinces covering 500 million subscribers. That amounts to a roughly 20% saving on its BSS systems. China Unicom also has a mixed BSS deployment with some functions centralized at the HQ level while other parts of the system are deployed locally in each province. At the provincial level, six large northern provinces have been migrated onto a single BSS code base. This is actually Model 2C, a common version of the application software running in multiple locations with centralized software distribution, monitoring, and disaster recovery. At the HQ level, some core functions and business processes have been standardized and centralized for all the provinces with multi-tenancy providing for local customizations. For example, the online store is available to all provinces using multi-tenancy for local variations. It has a standardized web interface for customers in all provinces. In this case, we're seeing Beijing on the left and Guizhou on the right. But each provincial opco controls its own products, its own price plans and offers, and each can have its own marketing campaigns. In 2010, the online store took $2 billion in sales. As we saw previously, centralization streamlines the business operations and creates cost efficiencies. But with multi-tenancy, each local OPCO retains control of their own business and can respond quickly to local market opportunities. China Unicom estimates that the unified online store saves them about $4 million annually on maintenance. At this point, you might be asking whether our experience in China is relevant to the rest of the world. China might be seen as a special case given the clear authority of headquarters to make decisions and implement them across the group. Some operator groups in other parts of the world have more challenges with this. However, the differences are not as clear cut as they might seem from the outside. The political challenge of aligning multiple opcos and the need to respond to cultural diversity in local markets from Beijing to Kashgar is at least as great as it is across a large European group operator, for example. And the sheer scale of the 31 individual provinces dwarfs most Western operating companies. One barrier which does apply less strongly in China is regulatory constraints around the issue of personal data, specifically the requirement found in many regions that personal data must be hosted within the subscriber's own country. However, there are other reasons for hosting data locally which also apply in China, and this challenge has been addressed by distributing the database layer of the BSS, as we saw earlier, while keeping other functions centrally located. Finally, the sophistication of the BSS requirements in China is every bit as complex as it is in the West. After all, China, which is the world's largest smartphone market, is undergoing an explosion in mobile internet usage in a highly competitive environment, with some of the world's largest over-the-top internet players threatening the operator's core business. In other words, China's operators are facing the same business and technology challenges as Western operators with the same impact on their IT systems. So the experience in China is in fact pretty relevant to other parts of the world. So we've seen that there are many approaches to centralizing and standardizing BSS operations. Using private cloud platforms and multi-tenancy, operators can have the best of both worlds, the efficiency of a centralized operation and the flexibility for local opcos to stay in control of their own businesses. This isn't just theory. The big Chinese operators are already making substantial savings through their own centralized BSS deployments. 
and their experience is also relevant to other parts of the world. But finally, what about the operational risk involved in migrating from legacy systems to a more modern architecture? This is always a key concern. But BFS transformation needs to be addressed, irrespective of the question of centralization. Many operators in established markets have very sophisticated legacy systems, which are very expensive to maintain. It takes too long to make the radical changes now needed to exploit the opportunity of LTE and combat the competitive threats in the new digital economy. Therefore, radical change is needed anyway. In this context, BSS centralization presents an opportunity to reduce the risk of IT transformation by simplifying operations as well as enabling substantial efficiency savings. Thank you for listening.